Okay, let's talk about the FTCE. And FTCE stands for Florida Teacher Certification Examinations. And the specific FTCE exam we're going to be talking about is the Elementary Education K through 6 exam. And here's the test code 604. That's the uh, test code that has to deal with the math that's on this particular FTCE. So what we're going to be doing in this video is taking a look at a practice problem that you should be able to handle pretty well if you're fully prepared for this particular FTCE exam. And we'll get to that in a second. But first, let me go ahead and introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed many online math courses to include uh, an FTCE uh, elementary education elementary education K-6 exam for this particular test code here. I'm going to leave a link uh, to that course in the description of this video. But all my um, courses that I construct, I do a lot with teacher certification uh, preparation. Um, I do a lot of research what's on this particular exam, and then I try to come up with a custom math curriculum that uh, really aligns nicely uh, to you know get you ready for, obviously, uh, for this particular exam. Now, the key there is I don't want to be giving you too much math, you know, like calculus, advanced uh, mathematics that you don't, you're not going to need. But then again, too, you don't want to be underprepared. So there is a balance there. And, you know, although this is an elementary education, you know, exam, you're going to need to know more than just basic elementary math, you know, like place value, fractions, decimals. You're going to have to know that stuff as well. But uh, for this particular exam, you're going to, I would classify the math as high school level math. You're going to need to know, uh, be strong in algebra and geometry amongst other topics. But you're not going to have to know super advanced trigonometry and things. It's good that, you you know, if you do know that, that's great. Okay. But the core of what you're going to be really, you know, the type of problems you're going to be dealing with is not going to be that level, you know, that advanced mathematics. Now, though, of course, there's other certifications, uh, other FTCE exams that will have you uh, look at that type of math, but not this particular one. Okay, so let's get to our problem here. So the way I like to do these little problems, these little in these videos, I do a lot of teacher uh, uh, prep videos. Is one explain what the problem is, then I'm going to give a hint here in a second. So if you don't want to hear the hint. You know, just pause the video, and then, of course, I'm going to solve the problem. So let's take a look at the problem. I have some equation here, 2x plus 5y equals 8, and I'd like you to solve for y. Another way to um, state this problem is to rewrite this equation in terms of y, okay? All right, so with that being said, that's uh, descriptive enough for those of you out there be like, okay, I know what I'm doing. It's it's pretty self-explanatory, right? I want you to rewrite this in terms of y, which is the same thing as solving for y. Okay, so uh, for those of you that need um, a hint, here it comes. If you don't want to hear the hint, um, you know, pause the video. All right, so what's going on here? Well, this is, uh, let's take a look at a basic problem. If I said we had 2x plus 1 is equal to 8. How would I solve that problem? Okay, how would I solve this equation? Well, hopefully you would be like, okay, I'm going to subtract 1 from both sides of the equation. So I have 2x is equal to uh, 8 minus 1 is 7. And then I'm going to divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, so x is going to be equal to 7 halves. So that's basically the steps you took, you know, two steps to get to the solution, okay? So if I'm asking you to solve for y, all right, what that means is I want you to rewrite this equation in terms of y. In other words, I want the final answer to be y equals whatever, you know, this is going to be our solution, okay? So that's what it means. Uh, that's what this problem is asking you to do. So the way you need to do this, and this is very, very important to be able to rewrite um, uh, equations or formulas in terms of a particular variable. It's a, it's an absolute skill that you must have. So this is not some trivial type of problem like you know, busy work. It's an algebraic you know skill set that you get. You you definitely have to be able to, uh, uh, to be able to do in order to you know do a lot of basic high school level uh, mathematics. So, so in this particular problem, and I don't I can't turn this into a full lesson on this, but I'm going to try to give you enough of a hint. 
So I'll, basically, I want to solve for y, okay? So I want to rewrite this thing so I have y equals, and then, of course, my answer is going to be on the right-hand side. So the question is, what, what do we do with x, okay? Because this is a variable, too. Well, what I want you to do with x, just treat it as a number, okay? Treat this as a number. So plug in a place value in there, okay? So this is 2 times x. So let's say... Uh, let x is equal to 4, any value, just conceptually think of this as a number for the time being, okay, treat this as a value, okay, and then take whatever steps you would take in order to solve for y. All right, so now let's get to the actual solution. So 2 times x, let's say that was 4, so this would be 8, for example, 8 plus 5y is equal to 8. Now, again, this is 2x, but just real quick, conceptually, I'm just going to think of this as a, as a value, an 8. I'm going to forget that there's a variable here, and I'm going to kind of track the steps I'm going to take in order to solve for this y. Okay, so what would I do? I would subtract 8 from both sides of the equation. Now, you know what? Let me change this here. Okay, I know I said, let's make this 3, because I don't want that to be a 0. All right, so this is 6. It doesn't make a difference, okay? So I'm going to subtract 6 from both sides of the equation. Okay, so instead of 8, I don't want an 8 minus 8 is equal to 0. I want to have a value there. So now I have 5y is equal to 8 minus 6. Now, 8 minus 6 is, is, of course, 2, but let's write it this way, 8 minus 6. We know that's going to be equal to 2, but again, I'm focused on solving for y, so now I would divide both sides of the equation by 5. So my final answer is going to be y equals 8 minus 6 over 5, okay? A minus 6, of course, is 2, or 2 fifths, okay? So knowing these steps or seeing, you know, the mechanics of what's going on is going to, you know, help us out to be able to handle this problem and be able to solve for y, okay? So take a good look at what I've done here. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time, okay, I'm going to just leave this as 2x, Okay? Leave this as 2x, because I'm just thinking, that, thinking of this as a value, as a number. All right, so now I'm going to just subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. I'm doing the same steps that I just you know, uh, got done doing, but now I'm, I'm handling this 2x like I'm just thinking of it as a value, so I'm not letting the x confuse me. So now I have 5y is equal to 8 minus 2x. And I'm going to put that uh, in grouping symbols. So to solve for y, all I have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 5. So y is equal to 8 minus 2x over 5. Okay, so that is the answer. And you can put this in grouping symbols if you like. Now, if you got the answer but you weren't quite sure why you got the answer or you're like, mm, you weren't as confident in your steps. Still, that's very good. Okay, just the fact that you were able to, you know, solve the problem was excellent. But you still want to have a command of, uh, you know, knowing, you know, what you were doing. Okay. I mean, obviously think about it. Would you want your students to be able to do, answer a question, but not really understand the steps to get to the answer, right? <laughs> uh, no, right? You just don't want them to be like, here is the answer. I don't understand how I got it, but here is the answer. Uh, no, right? You would almost rather have them understand the steps and get the wrong answer, but and correct something here. So the, the idea here is to understand, comprehend the mechanics of it so you can take those, um, those steps and apply them to more difficult problems, right? So this is a pretty easy problem. Uh, but I can give you a much more, I could have given you a more advanced problem, right, with more variables and make it more complicated. But uh, uh, a problem like this is something that you're definitely going to be able to have to do, especially when we're dealing with graphing lines or writing the equations of lines, etc. Anyways, I don't want to go off on too many tangents, but this is, you know, writing equations in terms of uh, one variable is very, very important, very, very important in, al uh, in algebra. Okay. So, but for those of you out there that, you know, struggle with this, don't panic, uh, you know, just use this as feedback. A lot of students actually in algebra, you know, have trouble solving for particular variables until that light bulb goes on and be like, oh, okay, now I get it. That's why I was kind of, you know, indicating in the beginning 
you know, you have to kind of, the variable you're asked to solve for, that variable, that's the only variable you're going to think of as a variable. Everything else you're going to think of as a number value. And you can use a substitution of some number and do that do that basic problem to kind of see the steps and then, you know, go from there if you're confused. Okay, that always is a good technique to solve problems in mathematics. But uh, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Again, you know, um, just because this is an elementary education certification doesn't mean that you're going to have to, you're going to be escaping, you know, algebra and geometry. Okay, so if math is your nemesis, you know, make peace with it <laughs> and just do the right thing and get immersed. Um, and you just don't know what kind of math you're going to you're, you're, what kind of math problems you're going to see. There's a lot of math topics that you're going to have to be ready for. Quadratic equations, systems of equations, radical equations, graphing lines, finding the equation of lines, area, surface area. It's a lot. And, and that's on top of place values, decimal, fractions, uh, whatever, you know. But just by virtue of you watching this video, you're obviously taking your, you know, uh, this certification seriously as you need to because this is the key for you to be able to teach at this level. You know, teachers do... Uh, fail these exams. Um, um, so don't be shy about, hey, this is your second or third time taking it. The thing is, you know, make adjustments and, and do the hard work, you know, up front. So when you go in on exam day, you feel confident about passing. So let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, I'm going to leave a link to my FTCE K through 6 um, exam or math test prep course in the description of this video. Uh, all my courses have taken me years to build, so I think it really uh, could definitely uh, help you out if you don't already have a game plan. If you're new to my YouTube channel, uh, hopefully consider uh, subscribing. I've been on YouTube for oh like at least 12 years uh, at the time of this video. I already have hundreds of videos on my channel that can help you out if you like my math teaching style. Um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up and leave me some feedback. What's your situation? I mean, are you coming from directly out of college into teaching? In other words, you went from high school to college and you're going to be a teacher. And let's say you're maybe 23 years old, 22, 23. That's, you know, that's pretty awesome. OK, but maybe you're, uh, you know, uh, you know, a retired military um, or you're starting another career. Maybe you were uh, law enforcement or maybe a real estate agent for for 10 years and now you're switching to become a teacher. All kinds of crazy um, paths of uh, becoming a teacher. Not everybody just goes from college to teaching, but that's not to say that those of you that actually went from high school to college to teaching, that's that's you know to be commended as well because you were lucky. You knew what you wanted to do early on. Um, you know, probably some teacher somewhere along the line impressed you or like what, you know, had a, such an impact on you that you too wanted to become a teacher. So that's awesome as well. But, um, whether you're coming from another career or coming from college and you're going into teaching for the first time, you know, half of being a teacher is passing these certification exams. Okay. That's one half of it. The other half is just developing the experience of dealing with kids, parents, grading, administration, all the other things that you really can't learn from a book, okay? Uh, my suggestion there is to latch on to those veteran teachers, have a lot of experience, and learn from them, uh, and, you know, learn what you want to learn from them, okay? Uh, until you, you know, find your own kind of style. You can have two teachers, completely different teaching styles, both great teachers, both effective. Um, so you kind of have to find your own way, but you got to give yourself time to develop that experience. You know, when you're teaching isn't going to be enough. Okay. But, um, I will say the more experience you have, the more you're going to enjoy teaching and it's a great, uh, career, but it takes time. Okay. It's just one of those things. Everybody thinks they know what it is until you actually do it. Uh, it's just like, I like to use the analogy of an airline pilot. You can go to school to learn how to fly an, an airliner, but until you get into the airplane, and fly for you know 10,000 hours, you're not going to develop that professional skill set. So it takes time. Give yourself some time because you've already done so much work to get to even this point. Okay, you don't want to go into teaching and be disappointed that you're not you know like everything's not easy. Okay, <laughs> it's going to take time. But anyways, I uh, I really enjoy um, making these videos to help uh, fellow teachers. I definitely wish you all the best on this particular FTCE exam. Thank you for your time and have a great day.